Hi, and welcome to episode 178 of the Heartland Knits podcast. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And today is January 7th, 2018. Happy New Year to all my knitty friends out there. It has been a while since I've recorded a knitting podcast. I did a, a, at least one sewing one that's been uploaded. Um, I did record episode 177 kind of right after Thanksgiving. It was rather short. It had all finished projects in it because at that point I had nothing on my needles. Um, and I do I did kind of talk in there a little bit why I hadn't been really knitting very much. I did kind of ruck up my wrist a little bit. So what I decided to do is kind of slide that whole episode in kind of right here so that that will get you caught up. And then I did finish a couple projects in December and I have a new project on the needles. So when that is over, I will show you those December projects and what I'm working on now. Hi, and welcome to episode 177 of the Heartland Knits podcast. I think it's episode 177. It's been a long time. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on places like Ravelry and Instagram. And today is Tuesday, November 28th, 2017. Like I said, it has been a while since I have recorded a knitting podcast. Um, and I generally do that on a Sunday, but today is Tuesday. I just got my hair cut and colored, so I thought I could sit down quick. The light is quickly fading outside. It, it was beautiful, sunny, and kind of mid-50s, which is unheard of. It's almost December. I will take it. But anyway, I thought I would um, quickly show you what I have been knitting in the last kind of month. I actually haven't been knitting a whole, whole bunch. I actually have nothing on the needles to show you. Um, the reason for that is I have been kind of resting my wrist as much as I can. Since the beginning of November, I have been converting a bedroom into a new sewing room. And as part of that, I had to rip up some carpet. It was very 70s-tastic shag carpet, which... There's no way that would work in a sewing room with pins dropping on the floor. Plus, it was 70s-tastic shag carpet. <laughs> it had to go. But anyway, it, it did do a little bit of a number on my wrist, and I would kind of knit a little bit if I had been knit maybe even around on something or across a row. I did start a few things and then kind of abandon them along the way. But... Um, I could I could feel it in my wrist, so I just kind of gave up for a little bit and just thought, just rest your wrist as much as you can. Let me, start, let me tell you about the shawl that I'm wearing. The design is Moon Dance by Jenna Krupar, who is, was, is Retro Lemon. I miss her podcast a lot, but she designed this shawl. I think I did um, do these points on the end. Um, these were different than um, how it was written, but the yarn for this is, let's see, it's Lisa Sousa Jonquil. The color is Jonquil, and this is her sock merino, which is not something that she um, dyes anymore, this particular yarn, but she still will dye this color, I am sure. It is my one of my very favorite colors of hers, and um, yeah, so that is what I'm wearing. I do have finished projects to show you, three of them. The first one, as you can imagine, because I was almost finished it, finished with it the last time I recorded, are my beautiful rose mittens. I still love these more than almost anything I've ever knit before. Um, I've got both thumbs done now. You can actually see there is the thumb there. Um, the back of it mirrors it and the front of it just completes that rose. I love these so much. I talked about them a lot in the last episode the last, well, the last knitting episode. Um, the yarn for these is um, Fairy Hair by Kim Croft. And I am, I love them so much that I am sewing a coat to match them that is going to be this kind of bright 
kind of magenta pink on the outside and the inside is going to have a, a green lining like this. I love them. The other thing I finished um, is, is the uh, most recent thing I finished it last week. I wore them last Tuesday night and that are my sort of stripy socks that I um, knit during this year. Um, so this is Opal Circus from maybe 2005. <laughs> um, it's very, it was a very, very old stash. I did wear them on last Tuesday night because it was the last class of my Master Gardener um, classes. And I knit most of these. I started them at the beginning of the year and then I would knit on them during, you know, waiting for a dentist appointment or something. Um, but I, the majority of them were done during my Master Gardener classes. And so I wanted to have them to wear the last class. I only wore them for a couple hours. So I usually wait to wear my socks till after I show them on the podcast. But they're perfectly matched. I think this is just not stretched enough there. And I love them. They were really fun to wear. And I have lots of shoes to wear them with. And... They just kind of make me happy. And then I do have one other project that I finished. And this is my sweater that I was working on um, during this fall. It has these really, really beautifully cabled sleeves. This is the design by Michelle Wang. It is called Hellebore. And it is out of Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I changed mine and made it into a cardigan. And I will try to give you a close-up. Um, I love how the cables look, especially on this raglan. So let me try to put it on, and I don't, I just don't know if it will show up in this kind of low light. So here's what it looks like on. I'm, um, I did make it a little bit longer than I originally was thinking, um, because then I can wear it with jeans. But I think it'll still be a short enough length to wear with dresses if I want to. So maybe you can see how how pretty this cable patterning is. It's very, very pretty. And you can sort of see the heathers in the yarn. This sweater reminds me of the Master Gardener program also because I, I, I think of this as my soil sweater because I started it when we started that kind of chapter in the, in the Master Gardener um, book. And the heather in this yarn, there's a gray and there's a brown and there's more a kind of a kind of a lighter tan color and as I was you know learning the all the soil terminology and things it's um, sand silt and clay is what makes up soil and that's kind of the colors that became synonymous in my head so um, that is this sweater I'm I'm you know very happy with it um how it fits and everything I, I think I'm Loft just is not my favorite sweater yarn. I've decided there's there will be no more loft sweaters for me. Um, it has nothing to do with how it knits up or anything. I know a lot of people have issues with it breaking. That was not a problem at all. Um, the problem that I don't, the, the issue for me is it just is such a lightweight yarn that it sort of, um, kind of doesn't stay put. It just, um, it doesn't have any drape or anything. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not wild about it. I do like shelter much, much more. So there will be more Brooklyn Tweed in my future. Just, I think I will go towards the shelter instead of the loft. I think this would be really nice to make, you know, mittens or hats or whatever, but I don't think I'll make another sweater. I made um, Brecken a few years ago and the same thing happened. That was a much longer kind of hip length sweater and that one would always pop up too. It's just so lightweight. Um, the sleeves were incredibly fun to knit in this design. Really, really fun. I did change the, um, the cuff originally has like a little, it's more of a raw edge that just kind of rolls. And I did do, um, a two stitch I cord. I just started right in with the cables and did a two stitch I cord around the edges. Um, on the on the button band I just did 
a couple ridges of garter and a two, a two stitch I cord to cast off. And um, so the, the sleeves were really fun to knit. The body, I don't know if I, I didn't think I was going to get through it. It's kind of this very, it's a pretty heathery yarn, but it's a very brown <laughs> yarn. I got a little sick of doing the stockinette in this kind of yarn. I just wanted wanted more color. So um, it, I finished it sort of as the weather turned um, and got much, much colder. We had a, a streak where it was really, really cold. And then today it got like super nice again. But um, I, I finished it right when it turned cold. So I never, I don't think I've actually worn it can't remember it's been sitting out here I don't think I have actually worn it kind of outside but um, anyway and then because this is going to be short and I got new shoes I thought I will show you my shoes because shoes and um, these I love I think they might have rocketed ahead of all my other shoes they're almost at the very tip top they're definitely in my top three favorite um, I love them so much. I wanted to get them last winter, and they sent me the wrong size. It was like a whole great big thing, and they had got they got lost at one point. And so anyway, then um, kind of when I was thinking of getting them again, starting like in the fall, they were out of my size. But then they restock, got a restock, and I got them right away. So I love them. So these are. Um, a flu box, of course, and these are the investigator. It's this little sort of boot. It's got a velvet tie and a yellow Peter Pan collar because who doesn't need an ankle boot with a Peter Pan collar? <laughs> I certainly do. And um, they have the little yellow, um, what do they call this? I don't know, heel, heel cap, I guess it is. And the blue sole, it's beautiful lacing, and the bot the bottoms are very dirty because I've been wearing them a lot. But you can sort of see. I can't remember if they say something. They just have the John Flubug thing at the bottom. But anyway, these are called the Investigator, and they are so super comfortable. Um, I love them to the extreme. Anyway, I hope you all had a really lovely Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. And um, hopefully I will check in again with you before the end of the year or before Christmas or certainly kind of before the end of the year. But I hope you all have a really great week. And until I see you next time, from my heart to yours, happy knitting. So at that point, it was kind of the beginning of December, I thought I would try knitting a little bit. So I don't know if you remember, kind of September time, I was knitting a little baby sweater for my niece, my niece's baby. And it never kind of got totally finished and sent out. And I got a Christmas card from her and saw a picture of the baby and thought that sweater is really not going to fit him. I didn't necessarily think it needed to be for a Christmas present, so I actually still have it here. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I want to wanted to sit down and record today was so that I could get it out in the mail to her. So I ripped out that sweater. I think it was the Babies and Bears sweater by Carol Anderson and decided to knit the Gramps cardigan by Tin Can Knits. I just think that it is something that my niece will really like to put her son in and so I used the same yarn I ripped out that that babies and bear sweater and I used the same yarn and I had that had a lot of garter in it so that had plenty in it even though I made it kind of a little bigger size so this is that little finished sweater hopefully that will fit him both both my niece and her husband are very very tall so I think he is the baby is on the tall side too. I made the two year size. My gauge was a little bit small, so I think it, it's going to come out to maybe like an 18 month size. So hopefully that will fit him. I did the little the little elbow patches, which I think are just adorable on this cardigan. 
The yarn for it is Plymouth Encore. I don't have the tags anymore, so I can't tell you the color. And the buttons I found in Stash, they were ones I had, and they seem to coordinate really nicely. And so anyway, that needs to go out in the mail um, this week because it's cold. It's cold where they are, so that has to go out. And then over kind of the Christmas holidays, it is my tradition to knit a Christmas time shawl. I usually start maybe the 22nd, 23rd, and then kind of knit all during the holidays, the week between Christmas and New Year's. I knit on it. I finished this, I think, the 30th, and then blocked it last weekend. And so I have this finished shawl. I'll try to hold it up so that you can see the whole thing. And I don't know if the sparkles are going to show up, but the yarn has um, sparkle in it. So, so the pattern for this is by Anna Victoria. It is called Stella Maris, Star of the Sea. And it's a, it's a very nice kind of geometric pattern to knit. You can kind of really follow along. You, um, it's, it's easy to sort of follow along and um, kind of know where you are when you pick up and put it down. Um, I enjoyed knitting. I enjoyed knitting it very much. The yarn is, you can see, it, it gradiates slightly. And that's sort of why I'm not going to really tell you who dyed the yarn. Because I bought the yarn in a kit to make a pair of socks. And you can see one end of the yarn was definitely much darker colored than the other end, which would mean for a pair of socks, one sock would be noticeably lighter than the other one, which is just not acceptable to me. I started the, a pair of socks out of this, and it, by the time I noticed it, I was quite far into the first one. And so I ripped it out and kind of threw it on the shelf, and it was in timeout for a long time. For this, it works out just fine. Um, it's not it's not a problem. It just looks like a slight gradient. Um, and I'm not going to tell you the, the dyer because quite honestly, I never contacted her at all or or you know told her I was kind of dissatisfied with it. So I never gave her the chance to sort of make it right. I don't know, maybe this is the only skein of yarn she's ever dyed that it turned out like that. Maybe she would have just been completely appalled and, and you know done anything to make it right. I don't know. I never gave her that chance. So I don't want to sort of say the the, the yarn company on, on here and, and say that I was like not happy with it. Um, it's it's nice in in the shawl. I'm I'm very happy with it in the shawl. It's it's very sparkly. I don't think the sparkles are showing up, but um, and I like the pattern. So the pattern is very heavily beaded. Of course, I didn't do the beads because it has the glitter in the yarn. I just thought that would be a little bit over the top. So there, that is that was my last finished project of 2017. And then it is usually I start a brand new sweater on January 1st. I had it all planned what I was going to do, but my yarn that I was going to use didn't arrive. I think it came on Wednesday, the, the uh, 3rd. So I started it the next day. And that's okay. I started a new sewing project on New Year's Day, which, which was fun. So... Um, the project that I wanted to knit is something I've had kind of planned since knitting camp last summer. And this is Meg Swanson's Knitting Camp, if you're new to the podcast. I attend that every year. And for the last few years, there's been a group of us that have sort of had a consensus of a, of a, a project that we want, all want to knit. And this year, it turned out to be the Norwegian Rose uh, cardigan pull our sweater by designed by Meg Swanson. It's a really pretty sweater. I have had it kind of in the back of my mind that I wanted to knit it since the first time I went to knitting camp is when it was first published and I have loved it ever since then. I'll show you a picture of it. 
This is the picture of it. It's an all over stranded cardigan. And it has this rose detail. It just has so many really beautiful, clever sort of, of details. And the, the, uh, the pattern is a schoolhouse press pattern. I'm sure you can get to it through Ravelry. I know schoolhouse press does do downloadable patterns now. Um, I am using it from this little booklet, which is long out of print. I think it almost instantly became out of print. And it's called The Art of the Sweater. It's a little booklet, very, very thin little thing. It has five uh, designs in it. And this was sold by Land's End, the Land's End catalog. And um, it, was a, it was a charity thing there, I think, is so much of, of the cost of it went to, um, was it Project Linus? Um, it was some charity. Um, yes. Um, yes, it was Project Linus. Back to last July, when we started talking about doing it, I knew instantly in my head the yarn I wanted to use. I was going to do the shorter version with just one rose, and I knew exactly what I was going to spin yarn for, and I was going to do um, a, a Shetland with kind of natural colors. I knew exactly the the where the I was going to get the fiber because there was this woman who always came to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, and I was going to buy Shetland fiber from her. Well, what happened was she retired last year, and so she wasn't there. And then I was thinking, well, I could get Shetland from someplace else, or Jameson and Smith, or or whatever, or maybe I should just change it. And do So I was all sort of, I was set to start it, but yet I, I wasn't sure exactly the colors I wanted to use if I wasn't going to use the natural shades and spin and all of that. So in December, I got an email from Schoolhouse Press and that they started importing a bunch more colors of Unspun Icelandic, which I love. And one of the colors just completely screamed at me. I wanted to buy a bun of it right away and I should have bought a bun. I didn't, but I should have. So anyway, I sort of was dithering on different colors and did I want to get a bun? So eventually I decided just to get enough for this sweater. But I should have bought a bun. But it's this beautiful rose color and it's got a little bit of a coral in it. It's called Sunset Rose, I believe, which is just perfect. And that is the per that is the color. It is the perfect pink. And so I'm you eat because Norwegian rose. I felt it had to have the rose. And I do have a rose in my rose garden. Um, my Kiss Me Rose is this exact shade of pink. I hope it, it returns over the, over the winter um, because I would love to have a picture taken with this rose, um, you know, with this sweater. So I'm using this, I'm using white, so I'm using pink and white. Because I'm using the Icelandic, I decided to do the full version with the three roses. And so the middle rose on that bottom band, I am going to use this sort of a pumpkin color. So it's going to be these three colors. And then this pumpkin is used a little bit in kind of at the at the shoulder seam and at the kind of the waist break. Um, so I will show you where I am. I started this on Wednesday, and so this is where I am. I am doing, I got through this. This border is called Pearl When You Can, and then I've got one rose, and I just started that second rose. So this is a steaked cardigan, and I am, there's my steak. I'm not speckling it, I'm striping it. And I don't know that it will show, but this bottom band, instead of doing a ribbing, it has Meg Swanson's very clever invention called Pearl When You Can, in that ribbing helps to keep the fabric from rolling because there's knit stitches and purl stitches. And she discovered that you don't have to put them into columns. As long as you have some knits and some purls, 
it will keep that bottom edge from rolling. And so that's what this has. All the white stitches there have our pearl stitches and the pink stitches are regular in regular stockinette. And you it's pearl when you can is because if you're if you um, come along whichever color that you've chosen, I've chosen the white. So if I come along and there's a white stitch below my needles, I'm going to be I would be knitting into a a white stitch, I can purl into that one because it won't make a blip. If I purl into a pink stitch, it will make a little pink blip um, for the purl stitch. But if I purl into a white stitch, it won't. So wherever I can, where you purl when you can, you get this. And so it's not rolling, but you can work, launch kind of right into a color pattern and a color work. Um, you can tell this bottom row, this bottom two rows, I wanted to, to do it just like that and launch into the knitting. You know when I do my boho sweaters and I always do that little band of, of stockinette at the top? This is why, because those first two rows, that's why it's flaring out a little bit, is those first two rows are just not the same tension as the rest of it. I, I just kind of loosen up those and I that's why I always do that on my bow sweaters because otherwise those top two rows would be like this. I plan to come along at the end and do an I an I cord to sort of tighten that up a little bit. But the really clever part of this design and one of the reasons why I've always wanted to do it is it works the button borders at the same time in the pearl when you can. So these two bands right here are the button bands for the cardigan. You knit them at the same time. So you can see that it's, they're knit at the same time. They're knit in the purl when you can, so they're not gonna um, curl. And when you cut the steek in the middle of them that I'm going to do a crochet steek, which has such a nice finished edge, you don't have to do anything to really make it look nice. On, on the, the cardigan front, and it will just roll to the inside and be kind of right there. So you get those button bands done kind of right away. Um, I've always wanted to do this sweater. So, yeah, this is where I am. I've, I've had a, I've had quite the adventure with, with um, what needles that I'm using. I, um, I've used this yarn before, so I kind of could start pretty much right away, um, kind of knowing my gauge. So and for most straighted knitting, I have found that if I use bamboo needles, I get a much better, smoother fabric. And so I started out with bamboo needles on this, and I don't know if it's just because my wrist is still a little hurting, um, probably, but um, I, w I was having issues I could kind of do one row and put it down. I had to put it down and, and stuff. And I was, my gauge was was a little bit different on the pearl when you can section. And it was kind of flipping all over the place. And so I thought, okay, I will put on my high, high, sharp tips and just see if that makes a difference. And I have the interchangeables in both the bamboo high, highs and the sharps. So I could just you know, take off one tip and put them on, put the other one on, which was perfect. And that really didn't do anything different. And so I thought, well, now, what about, what do I have for um, fixed circulars? I haven't used, I don't use them very often. And I looked through and I went to kind of the old tried and true from when I was kind of a newer knitter, my, my uh, kind of first Fair Isle sweaters. Well, I started using my Addy Turbos, my kind of the old tried and true, and they are what are working fantastically. I, I knit those in and I did three rounds right in a row, kind of with no problem at all. So those are what I'm using, three millimeter Addy Turbos. Um, yeah, so I'm loving that sweater and how it is turning out. 
it is kind of the only thing on my needles and it's nice to have this basket with this yarn and the sweater kind of sit right next to my chair and I can pick it up and put it down and it's a really nice project. It's making me want to knit. More. I hope you all had a really happy holiday season and have a start to a really great new year. So from my heart to yours, happy knitting.